What's up, what's up, live? How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well, as always. Uh, if you guys notice that I'm bouncing around a lot, I want to remind you that this year we're focused on holistic entrepreneurship. What in the world does that mean, JT? That means that I'm a firm believer that it doesn't make sense to make a whole lot of money and be in such poor health that you can't enjoy it. <laughs> so uh, what I'm intentional about is my health this year, more so than any other year. So I'm actually on a walking treadmill and I have a laptop here and have another laptop here that's going to allow me to see you guys' comments. Um, and again, just want you all to know, still your favorite country cousin, JT. But if you're worried about why JT looks weird, uh, my goal is 10,000 steps a day. Uh, you guys may already be getting your 10,000 steps in a day, uh, but I, I be kind of busy. So I'm burning the midnight oil, but I'm refusing to lay it down without getting my 10,000 steps. And you can do like how I'm doing it. I'm not trying to break any records. Slow and steady. We just getting it in. What I want to talk about tonight, though, right, because I'm spending way too much time on that. But I got some comments in the last video. So I have to address it in the next few videos until everybody knows what it is that I'm doing, I guess. Let's talk about the easiest versus the hardest things to sell to make $10,000 a month. You guys talk to me in the chat. What do you want to know first? Should we talk about the easy stuff first or the hard stuff first? Somebody put it in the chat. Let me know. Y'all want to talk about the easy stuff first or the hard stuff first? Shout out to all the people that are here. Quite a quite a good turnout to say it's this time of night or no matter what time it is when you're watching this. But uh, somebody put it in the chat. Should we talk about the easy stuff or the hard stuff first? Or uh, I'll take your silence to mean that as long as we cover it, it don't even matter, right? Okay, hard. So that's the first comment that I see. So we'll go with that. Um, and I'm glad you you know you guys chose to talk about the hard stuff first. So if your goal is to make a lot of money, let me just oversimplify it and tell you guys three things that are incredibly hard to sell. First and foremost, information and transformation. Do not fall into the trap that people will say the easiest way to make money online is to make videos trying to teach people how to make money online. I can tell you from a practitioner standpoint, if you don't have a heart to help people, if you're not a practitioner, if you don't genuinely want to see people go from this level to the next level, you're going to be frustrated. You're not going to make a lot of money. Most people don't make any money. Don't fall into that lie. If you believe that I'm trying to mislead you, you try to do it. You post on your social media, hey, you guys. Give me X amount of money and I'll teach you how to do this thing, right? Now, I am pro personal development and financial literacy, but I will be the first person to tell you that that is something hard to sell. Can you sell it? Yes. But if my goal was to say, where is the low hanging fruit? Where is something that I can get into fairly easily? and start making, you know, decent money, and then later big money, I would not start there. Just being real. In the society that we live in today, automatically, people are going to first say, you're a scammer, or you're just making money off the information, or I don't believe your transformation. Uh, if you really can get me XYZ result, why won't you just do the result for yourself and not charge me? So, Fair warning, if you have a heart to do it, I don't want to discourage you from doing it. 100% do it, that's why I do it. But if your goal is just trying to make some money fast, trying to sell information online, trying to sell transformations online is not an easy way to make your first or next $10,000 a month, right? Second thing that I have on this list, let's do three and three, right? Low ticket sales. Generally speaking, most statistic carrying websites or entities will consider you to be in the low ticket market if you sell anything that's a hundred bucks or less, right? That's generally speaking, low ticket. Some other people may differ. They may say if it's less than a thousand bucks, 
if they is less than 10,000 bucks, whatever it is, uh, cause we live in a world today where it's people that have six and seven figure high, high ticket offers. So they'll consider anything less than that. But generally speaking, low ticket offers by most institutions is considered anything that you're selling. That's a hundred bucks or less quickly. Here is why selling low ticket is extremely hard if your goal is to make $10,000 a month, $100,000 plus a year. You are competing against the biggest, baddest players in the game, whether you know it or not. If you are doing physical products, right? If you are doing physical products, you don't have the buying power of the Walmarts and the other big companies out there, all right? I showed you guys examples in previous videos of like my hourglass example, but retail, a product that goes for 32 bucks, 35, 32 to $35, whatever it is, retail price goes down to eight bucks. As long as you get 200 of them or more, right? Do you have the buying power to do that? All right. Now, some people might say I can't afford to buy 200 of them at $8 a piece. I don't need $200 of them at eight a piece. So if you're doing physical products, the reason why that's hard to do, and there's a lot of reasons why, again, I'm, I'm not saying they're hard in the sense of you shouldn't do them. I'm saying that they're hard so that way you have realistic expectations. Make sense? So that way you have realistic expectations as to, hey, I need to come here expecting to grind. Right. I'm, I'm coming here bleeding with value. It's going to be an uphill battle. This is one of the harder ways to make money. Let's say you decide to do a digital product or service that reduces your cost of goods sold. Right. So you're going to do a software. You're going to do an ebook, a course, something like that. The biggest players in the game spin. And this is just being respectful. But I've been in the rooms behind closed doors. The people that are the big Instagrammers, big YouTubers that are talking about helping thousands and thousands of people a year with their softwares, with their digital products or services, they're paying six figures a month in advertising, right? So yes, the cost of that thing is low. Sometimes it may be zero depending on how they got it structured. But when you're doing low ticket sales, it is very competitive and you have to understand either you're going to not be able to compete on price because their costs of goods sold are higher than your competitors or you're not going to be able to compete on ad spend because those same people that are peddling a similar product, service or information in you are spending arguably, right, off the top of my head, big players right now are spending $600,000 to a million dollars a month. The biggest players, you know, you fill in the blank, all right? If you watch this sort of content, I'm sure you watch other people as well. The biggest players in the game are spending 600000 to a million a month. I've seen they back in, right? So can you make a lot of money in low ticket? Yes. Is it easy? No, right? That's the second hard way to make a lot of money. Right. And just to do a catch all for the third one, because like I said, I want to do three of the hard ones, three of the easy ones. Since the first comment said do the hard ones first Uh, any B to C business. <clears throat> if you're not making a hundred grand a year right now, you shouldn't be B to C. I'm going to say that again. If you're not doing a hundred grand a year or better in your business. You shouldn't be doing B2C. B2C stands business to consumer, right? B2C stands for business to consumer. You should be B2B. You should be a business who primarily serves other businesses. Why? It's easier to get them to say yes. You're going to get larger chunks of money. Of course, there's going to be some meat left on the bone because that business may be going doing another B2B transaction with somebody else, or they may be going B2C and they have to have margins in place as well. But if you're not making a hundred grand a year, you should be B2B. Just being honest. If you guys got questions, throw the questions in the chat. All right, let's get into the easy ones. But first, let me make sure, do you guys understand 
what the three hard ones were and why they were the hard ones. Let me know yes or no. Do you guys understand what the three hard ones were and why they were the hard ones? Again, information and transformation, low ticket, anything 100 bucks or less, right? B to C. If your primary customer is a is an individual or an end user, if your primary customer is not another business, right? Uphill battle for those reasons. All right, that we talked about earlier. Now let's talk about what are the easier ways, right? What are the easier ways or the, in my opinion, the easiest ways to make at least 10 grand a month have a six figure plus year? Number one, and this is in no particular order again, but just off the top, I wrote them down real quick so I didn't forget any of them, uh, is utilities. Now I know what you're thinking. Typically when people hear the word utilities, they think of a light company, water company, uh, gas, internet, JT, how we're going to start these sorts of companies. But I want you to think about this. Oftentimes, we discount the value of what we have simply because we're the ones that have it. I'm going to say that again so that way it sinks in. Oftentimes, we discount the value of what we have just because we're the ones that's with it. You might have the ability to deliver a million dollar a year product, service, or information, but because you never made anywhere near that much money, nobody around you ever made that much money, the people in your ear are asking you how you're going to do that and you don't know, you have now discounted the value of what you possess, right? What is a utility depends on the market that you're bringing it into. Right. I'm not saying everything could be a utility, but think about this. If you have an exterior cleaning business, some people call it a pressure washing business. Right. If you have a landscaping business. All right. And you're in a higher end community. Let's go even more narrow than that. You target subdivisions that have higher end houses that are also uh, they have very strict HOAs or homeowners associations. I have a cousin that lives in such a community. Let's say that the landscaper or himself, whoever does it, uh, they, they cut grass and some grass gets up on his garage door. Let's say it's a windy day. Some debris gets up on the garage door. However it happens, you got some, some dirt on your garage door, right? It's nature. It's natural. It's, in, it's inevitable that it'll happen. That's a $300 fine if it's there for 24 hours or longer. So when somebody first notices it, they'll, you know, put a little citation out on your property, letting you know, hey, we see this. You got 24 hours to rectify it. If you don't rectify it within 24 hours, it's a $300 fine. What if you're on vacation, JT? It's a $300 fine, right? What if you out of town because somebody died? It's a $300 fine, right? They don't care. It's a $300 fine. And I think every citation they issue out is at least $300 or better. If your grass gets over so many inches, I don't want to lie to you. I don't know the exact inches. But if your grass gets over so many inches, you get a 24-hour notice. Hey, within 24 hours, you have to cut this grass. If not, it's a $300 fine or better, depending on the size of your yard, right? And then every day that they issue the fine that you don't pay, I think it's an extra $75 a day eventually they'll do it for you. They'll send out somebody. They'll pressure wash your garage door. They'll cut your grass. They'll do whatever. But expect to pay a hefty fine in the mid four figures, maybe even five figures. Just depends on the number of infractions and how long it is. Why do you tell us all of that, JT? If I have an exterior cleaning or pressure washing service or a landscaping service, am I a utility a necessary usefulness for that community, yes or no? But if we take that same man or woman who says, I have an exterior cleaning company, I have a pressure washing company, I have a landscaping company, and we take them to the hood, right? That person might be arguing to get 50 bucks, 100 bucks. Whereas they can go over here, charge double, triple, or whatever, 
and people will happily pay that price. So this is what I want to ask. Uh, this is what I want you to ask yourself, rather. Excuse me. Your product, your service, your information, whatever it is that you're selling, who could it be a utility for? Who could it be a utility for? Right. Because I know some people that struggle every year with their small business. I know some people in that same industry that kill it. Right. How does this person barely make 15 grand a year and this other person makes one point five million dollars? Y'all do the same business in the same city. How is that possible? Right. The people that I know that do very well. Right. They look at things such as who can they be a utility for? Make sense. All right, that's one easy business to start. Ask yourself, whatever your product is, whatever your service is, whatever your information is, can you be a utility, right? Let me insert a bonus here for the people that watch the video this long. I believe that everybody here should learn reselling. What is reselling? The ability to source items at price A, list them on Amazon, eBay, Macari, or wherever else for price B, Make money off the spread. Make money off the spread. Let's say you could buy it for $3, sell it for $10. You lose another $2 or so in shipping and fees, right? You put $5 in your pocket after you make your money back. And that's on a very small scale. On a big scale, I made thousands of dollars doing this and was able to not only pay all of my bills, but have disposable income that I could later stack up and allow me to invest in other things. And it was part of the foundation that led me to become a seven-figure entrepreneur. So I believe just like, you know, I got a six-year-old daughter. I don't know if you guys got kids or not, but there are certain things that my daughter is going to learn, right? She's in gymnastics now. She's enjoying it. But before she gets grown and gone, as we say, she's going to learn how to swim. Before she gets grown and gone, she's going to learn how to drive. Before she gets grown and gone, she's going to learn how to protect herself, right? I'm going to make sure she has a concealed weapons permit. She knows how to properly use a firearm if she ever needs to defend herself, right? She's going to know about managing her money, all right? Why do you share these things, JT? I want you to understand that reselling to me is just as important as all of these other things that I named. And I want to encourage you all, just like you prioritize for your kids or you prioritize for yourself that, hey, I need to learn how to swim. I need to learn how to protect myself, get my concealed weapons permit. I need to learn how to drive. I need to learn how to do whatever you feel is an important skill that can serve you in perpetuity Add reselling to that list. Right. Reselling is something you can learn fairly inexpensively if you have the time to do it. Uh, you can learn it for free, all right? But if you really want to jump on it and hit the ground running, there's people that programs that'll get you up to six, eight, ten grand a month just like that. Now, do they cost money? Yes. So it really just depends on if you're somebody that has more time than money, more money than time, whatever it is, right? Uh, but ad reselling is an honorable mention. That is a skill that I think will change your life. So if you don't know where to start, Go watch some videos, listen to some podcasts, go out and learn reselling. I believe that's the simplest skill 100% of you all can learn and make more money. I'm going to tell you, when I first heard somebody say this, I was homeless living on the side of Interstate 95. There was a gentleman by the name of Gary Vaynerchuk. He goes by Gary V. He said, if you learn how to resell on eBay, teddy bears and coffee mugs, you can make 80 grand a year. I'm going to be honest with you. I said, this crazy white guy, he got to be lying. He just saying this for views. I went down the rabbit hole, learned how to resell, and I'm here to tell you he didn't lie, y'all. He didn't lie. All right? We didn't do a lot of teddy bears, but, man, we cleaned up nicely with coffee mugs. Think about that. How crazy is that that you can make a living off of selling coffee mugs? Do you know how popular coffee is, first and foremost? Let's start there. Coffee is extremely popular, right? Coffee mugs, there are people that collect coffee mugs, I dare I say religiously. Like, they're really into it. There are certain mugs that are collectibles, all right? I've sold mugs, and people in my network have sold mugs 
that they got for less than a dollar for 60 plus dollars, right? So super easy skill to learn. Um, I, I would say put that in your back pocket uh, as one of those things, right? Just like you know how to swim, just like you know how to probably use a firearm, just like you know how to drive a car, all of that other good life skills that you learned and you teaching your kids, add reselling to the list, right? Let's keep going though. What else is easy to sell? B2B services. B2B services. You remember I told you B2C is hard? So what's the opposite, JT? B2B services, right? B2B services include being an independent courier. Why would you say being a, uh, why would you say B2B independent courier business is easy to do? My client, when I was delivering to Walmart pharmacies, post offices, Walgreens, those videos are still up on this channel. You guys can go back and watch them if you think I'm lying. I intentionally leave them up, right? They're years old, but they're still on the channel, right? My client wasn't any of those entities. My client was the 3PL, the third party logistics company. The third party logistics company went and negotiated the contract and then they just outsourced the labor to independent couriers. So that's how we ended up being the butts in the seats, as I like to call it, that actually did the work, made the money or made a portion of the money. Of course, the 3PL made some money as well. Right. So B2B, I didn't have to go get a warehouse and I didn't have to meet all the qualifications that these manufacturers had. Right. I didn't have to know how to negotiate or none of that. All I had to have is a reliable piece of equipment and a good driving record, good background. I could go from point A to point B efficiently. Boom. And that business, that very simple business, as I was telling somebody today, very simple business allowed me to make my first six figures. Right. Appliance repair. A lot of you all <coughs> may have heard me talk about that in the past. Right. Appliance repair. You go partner with like American Home Shield or these other warranty companies and they will provide work for you. Right. Depending on your area, the company may may vary. Um, and I'm saying these businesses, yes, you can market. And I do think that eventually as you scale, you should market and get what we call cash customers or go direct, you know, to whoever it is. But in the beginning, very easy way to make money. B2B service based businesses, independent courier service, appliance repair service. Uh, I, I talked to a friend of mine. He's out of Atlanta. Told him we probably going to be coming to Atlanta in the next couple of weeks or so. And um, matter of fact, Chef Dave, shout out to you if you watch this video. So you guys know I got a chef, Chef Dave. Uh, he comes to my events or even comes, you know, up whenever I'm doing something at one of my locations and uh, we want it to be catered. Uh, but Chef Dave is based out of Atlanta now, right? Chef Dave got the contract with Medicaid, Medicare, or whatever. And um, now anytime somebody needs transportation to one of their medical visits, boom. Chef Dave is on the list. He gets to pick, you know, when he works, what it, what work he does. Uh, he said, hey, Jay, I'm on track to do 75K this year, right? It's only March. I ain't no telling when you'll watch this video. People that are watching it live are like, no, duh, JT. But I do understand some people are going to watch this video after the fact. He's on track. He already knows in March he's going to make 75K this year. Guess what? I told him, hey, look, if you don't go find one of these 20-year-old failure to launch generation, and that's not derogatory, that's what they told me they were called, and they don't really know what they want to do right now. They don't know if they want to go to the military. They don't know if they want to go to college. They just trying to figure it out, but they want to make a little money. If you don't put another butt in the seat and get you some more contracts and have your 100K year and stop playing, right? This is a B2B business. He signed up with Medicaid, Medicare, and he, now he's got that going as well. Or marketing services as well. You guys get the point with B2B services. Let's go on to the third one. Time. Like, just like I did when we did the hard side, let's do a big one to encapsulate all of them. Are there more businesses we can talk about? Yes. But for the sake of time, let's keep it short and sweet. Any business that can save you time. Some of these can overlap. I'll give you guys an example. I gave you the example talking about a utility with a landscaping company. My landscaper came by today. I paid him $225. Now, depending on where you are, that may be a little bit of money. That may be a lot of money. That may be average. But my landscaper came by, uh, cut the grass, $225, right? 
Um, why would I? Now I'm in good enough health, believe it or not, to cut my own grass. Right? I grew up cutting grass. I'm a country boy from South Carolina. Like cutting grass was like part of learning to walk. You know how some of those kids get that little toy lawn mower. They got the little balls jumping in it, and you walk with that. Nah. In the country, they give you a real lawnmower. Grab this push mower, learn to walk with it, right? So I've been cutting grass my entire youth. Why do I wait to now at this point in my life with good health by the grace of God to start paying somebody else? I could have saved that 225, right? And I could have cut the grass myself, right? Wrong. I could have done it physically, yes. It would have been the wrong decision for me to do. And I want you to understand that is because when he approaches me and charges me X amount of money to do what he does, I'm not buying landscaping services, right? That's a commodity. You never want to be a commodity, right? A commodity means that you do what you do roughly, give or take, just as good as anybody else. If you're a commodity, I'm going to make a decision based off of the price that you charge, right? If you're no better, no worse than anybody else, who can do it the cheapest, right? But... He saves me time. While he was outside doing some landscaping on my properties, right, I was in here, and today, in that same window of time, right, think about this, let it sink in, in the same amount of time that he spent cutting grass that cost me $225, I made $3,400. I couldn't be in two places at once, right? AI and, and computers and technology and stuff, we're not quite there yet. So I could have been saving $225 or I could have been making $3,400. Which one would you choose, right? Which one would you choose? Would you rather save $225 in, let's call it 40 minutes or so? Or make $3,400. Matter of fact, with the amount of, uh, of yard that, that had to be cut, I wouldn't have finished that in 40 minutes. But in 40 minutes, $3,400, right? So what's the point, JT? Because I'm not bragging or boasting. There's nothing that I have done that you can't do, right? I'm 100% here to be an example to you, encourage you, and try to give you all the value I can. What I want you to take away from this is this. How can your business, your product, your service, or the information that you provide, how can that save your ideal customer time, right? If you would have came and pitched me and say, hey, I'll cut your grass, right, and I'll be the cheapest person in the city, right? He said $225, i will do it for $25, right? But you butch up the yard, you, you waste three days cutting it, right? Now you a headache. Now you a hassle, right? But if you come, and this is the same business, right? If you come, you're professional, and you're able to frame the value that your business brings in a way that the other person cares about, right? I care more about my time than about saving a couple hundred dollars. Not everybody is like that, right? Now, if you choose to go B2C against my recommendation, then a lot of B2C people, they make decisions based off of price. I don't like being a commodity, right? I don't want people to make a decision on whether they should buy my product, my service, my information, just because it's cheaper than the next person. Now, if after I run my numbers, after I assess what's a fair value for whatever it is I want to bring to the marketplace, if that number still is lower than my competitors, amen. But I'm not going into it saying, you charge $10, I'm going to do it for 8 Somebody else can come by behind me and do it for 6 No, that's not business, right? That's just a race to the bottom. That's not business. So what I want you to take away from this is I really want you all to start thinking about how can your business be a utility? How can you provide a B2B service? How can you save people time? If you do these three things, you'll find that it's super easy for you to make money. I'm about to open up my five-day program, right? I'm about to open up my five-day program. What my five-day program will offer is if you have a business and you're not making 100K a year, I want you all to be clear on this. 
It is not worth the risk of being in business if you make less than $100,000 a year, right? I'm cousin JT. I'm not saying this to insult you, but family, if you, if nobody else can be honest with you, family should be able to be honest with family, right? So, hey, boom. Cousin Thompson was telling me I need to do 10,000 steps a day. Hey, look, normally I live a, a, a pretty sedentary work life. Guess what? I got an elevated table. I got a walking treadmill. He said, I need to do 10,000 steps a day. We're doing 10,000 steps a day, right? I could have got in my feelings and, and said, well, no, because it is. And no, I don't want to do that and have all of these excuses, right? And what that would have did, right? Nothing. It would have been no benefit to me. But, hey, boom, somebody give you the right answer. Hey, boom, it, it, you could cry about it. You could fuss about it. You could say why you can't do it. Or you can raise or rise, excuse me, right to the occasion. All right? Hence, your boy's going to be walking on the treadmill for a lot of these videos. Right? Why? Because that's the right answer. So I want to give you the right answer. If you're making less than 100 k a year in your business, why take on the headache? Why take on the stress? Why take on the hassle? Why take on the risk? All of that stuff is on you for 40000 a year, 80000 a year. Even if it's $99,000 a year, you can go get a job and do a little side hustle here and there, right? I was telling a partner of mine, I said, man, the average person, you know, whatever you deem average, right? Let's not get into that. But the average person, if I just had a normal nine to five job doing whatever it is I would be doing, man, I would just keep them dogs in the backyard, register as a breeder and shoot between selling dogs on the side and working a regular nine to five job. You could do over a hundred K a year. All right. Now I know some people out there, they're against breeding. They say it's enough dogs out there. Uh, you shouldn't breed more. Right. So I'm not saying breed mutts, not saying breed cheap dogs. Right, these dogs are over four thousand dollars is what I paid for them a piece. Right, um, well I got a little bit of discount on the other one because I helped that business make over ten thousand dollars, and then they gave me a discount on the dog. Just being honest with you, but full price over four thousand dollars. All right, you could just do that. That's way easier than trying to develop a product, service, information, market it to people, paid ads, influencers, all of that. Right. So if you are sincerely interested in starting a business, I don't care what your business is. Let's set a threshold that makes it worthwhile. Right. Who wants to work hard and take on a whole lot of risk for a little bit of money? Right. Who wants to work hard? Right. And, and take on all the risk for a little bit of money. Let me see if there's any questions here real quick. I don't know who the eBay guru is. Uh, Gary V first introduced it. He doesn't really teach it. Rally Roots, Craigslist, Hunter. Um, start with those two YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. And um, yeah, just check out what they got for free on YouTube and then go down the rabbit hole based off of what you need to know after that. Um, For reselling, where's the best place to buy? Items at a low amount to be able to resell them for a profit. So what I used to do is I used to go to yard sales, thrift stores, discount section of major retailers like Walmart and Target. Um, man, Roses, if you have a Roses. Maxway, if you have a Maxway. Um, man, they used to be in a... I always tell this story, right? But I'll say it fast this time. There was an Indominus Rex that came out when they did Jurassic World. Uh, the fingers on the dinosaur were honestly pretty cheaply made, so they would break off fairly easy. So the Jurassic brand discontinued making them because they deemed it a choking hazard. Well, that means that whichever ones that they had produced and in rotation went up in value. So I would go to Roses. I would spend like seven, eight dollars, I believe. Definitely wasn't more than eight bucks. So I would spend seven, eight dollars on this toy. At first, when I started selling it, it was only going for $40. So we would buy all of them and then sell them, and then, you know, it made sense. Uh, but then they went from $40 to $50, $70, $80. I think the highest I remember seeing it was like $140, right? And then they became harder to get. So um, that, that was by far 
uh, I would say margin wise to get something that cheap and sell it that high. Uh, that's why that constantly comes to mind. I'll probably remember that flip for forever. Um, and just networking at Roses. I found out that they get a lot of stuff on a pallet with a manifest. They don't really compare what their stuff is worth with eBay, Amazon. That's, that's not their business model. Right. So they pay X amount of dollars for it. They mark it up the X amount of dollars. They throw it on the show. So those are some of the places that we went to and killed it. Here's the thing with reselling, though, real quick. Um, don't buy anything if you don't know when it's going to sell. Don't buy anything if you can't at least triple your money off of it. Right. There's going to be fees, maybe shipping costs. Right. So my rule of thumb was I'm not buying nothing if I don't know when it was going to sell. You could tell me, so it's an ink pen, right? You could tell me, hey, JT, I'll sell this ink pen for a dollar. This is a $1,000 pen. Okay, that sounds good. Um, Well, one of these ink pens sell every 100 years. Man, I might not live long enough to make that money, right? So is it still attractive? Like, you know, maybe I buy it for a dollar, leave it to my daughter or whatever, whatever. If I'm in a financial space to do that, that's cool. But if I'm in a space where I'm trying to get money now to feed my daughter, right? I don't want to buy this for a dollar and then wait a hundred years and hope I make a thousand dollars. Like, doesn't make sense. So it really just depends on where you are. Um, But I would say, generally speaking, don't buy anything if you don't know when it's going to sell. Um... Don't buy anything um, if you don't know that it's going to at least triple your profit or more. Uh, yeah, those are just some of the basics off the top of the head. Um, yep, yep, I gave you guys those two YouTube channels for free. I'm not really sure. Um, go follow Travis underscore GWV. GWV stands for Generational Wealth Vibes. Travis is the best teacher of Amazon. Amazon is the big fish. Right, so if you're trying to get straight to the money, I'm going to be real with you. I'm biased with eBay and Macari. That's not the big fish. Go learn Amazon. Travis from GWV. GW, GWV, right? Can't even talk. Stands for Generational Wealth Vibe. All right, so if you're going to learn reselling and want to go straight to the bag, that's what I would recommend. Oh... Uh... Boom, boom, boom. Oh, yep, yep. Yep, Thompson, the one told me. Get them 10,000 steps in, man. Yep, yep, Thompson, the real deal. Oh, five below story. Yep, yep, sometimes you can find good stuff there, too. All right. Can I show you guys this? Hold on. I'm going to pause my treadmill. Let me see if I can show you guys this. It's probably not going to focus. Can you guys see that? Oh, it went back to the time. Hopefully, it focuses really quick. Reason why I'm showing you that is, like I said earlier, um, when we kicked off this live stream, I don't believe that there's any value. And this is my, my Fitbit. I'm just showing you how many steps we did today so far. Um, I, I want to encourage you. You guys know this channel is all about helping you make more money your own personal development, just overall, just becoming a better, you know, whoever, right, for yourself, for your kids, for generations to come. But it's no good that you make a million dollars or 10 million or whatever your financial goals are if you always at the doctor, if you always feel terrible. Um, and I've been guilty of it for many, many moons where I was just super focused on get the bag, get the bag, get the bag. We'll figure out everything else once we get rich. And by the grace of God, we got rich. So now we got to figure it out, right? Um, so for those of you out there that are in business or want to get in business, but you are making less than 100K a year or you're worried that you might make less than 100K a year, join my free newsletter and you guys will be the first ones to know. Uh, the first ones to know when the five-day program is open. So we used to do it live, but a lot of people had conflicts and getting the recordings and it was just to me it was way easier so it's self-paced five days and then at the end you can book a call and you'll talk to me or a member of my team and we'll you know go from there whatever makes sense right so that program is going to be designed for people that are in business if you're making less than 100k 
if you're aspiring to start a business and want to know how you can create a business to make 100K, um, all of those details, though, will be explained in the free newsletter. Also, I want to let you know, as always, when they do these studies, you might have heard this before. The rich keep getting richer while while the poor are, are getting poorer. They, they measure a lot of factors. The common denominator, I'll give you the short version of it, is this. Reason why the rich get richer while other ethnicities don't. And I'm saying it like it's an ethnicity. It's really not. Why other social classes don't, all right, is because of home ownership, right? Real estate ownership, right? So that's why I'm going to also provide underneath this video my guide on how to buy real estate for $1,000 or less without debt, without wholesaling or get paid just for trying. It's through tax sale investing. What that means is people don't pay their taxes on their property. You can go bid on them in an open auction. And then there's going to be a redemption period. And that redemption period, somebody can reclaim it. If they do, that's good. You get your money back with interest. If they don't, that's good. You're going to get a tax deed or a tax lien, depending on the area that you're in. Uh, we talk about how you can roll that over into a warranty deed if you know you really want to uh, sell it or get financing or whatever it is. And we also talk about um, how do you get paid just for trying. Let's say you go and everybody outbids you. Do you just say you wasted your time? No, there's a way that you can take advantage of making money just for trying. And the reason why I want to emphasize that is because I know a lot of you all out there do sincerely want to better your financial situation. You don't know what you're up against. So you might have heard the rich get richer, but you don't know because real estate ownership, they got the appreciation. They got the appreciation and the depreciation of the real estate. They got the cash flow. Right. And, you know, they can do a lot of things with that asset as well. Um, but most people think that you got to have great credit, a lot of money, both. Or you got to cold call people all day, get cussed out and hung up on. That's not the case. Uh, what I like to do and I do several things in real estate, but what I like to do and what I recommend people that don't have a lot of money that want to get into this space do is start off with tax sale investing. And uh, if you guys want that whole blueprint, it's somewhere underneath this video as well. If you got any questions, comments, concerns after the fact, put it down underneath the video. Um, if you guys have a walking treadmill, I'm not telling you to go out and buy one if you don't already have it, right? Because I don't know your situation. But if you guys got a walking treadmill, right, I challenge you all to start watching my YouTube videos on your walking treadmill, right? Hey, we might even set up a group. Do one of, I think Under Armour has an app where, where it'll let all of us be in a group and we'll all see each other's steps. But, hey, y'all let me know if y'all want to do that. Till next time, I'm your favorite country cousin. See y'all in the next one.